Hey everyone. Hello. Hello everyone. Good morning, everyone. Um, let's give it a couple more minutes for more folks to join. Hey, everyone. Hey, Alex. some sort of uh you just posted a link to the chat and you can add yourself as an attendee Well, it sounds like we have had uh, quite a bit of people join. Uh, thanks for joining, everyone. Um, excited to have uh, another TAG runtime meeting. Uh, today, we have the KCP project. Um, project um, is basically a control plane like Kubernetes, but to run other things than Kubernetes too. Uh, so, yeah, so we have S S Stefan and Sebastian. Um, you can go ahead and take it away. All right. Hello. Um, before we start, so Sebastian here, by the way, I haven't seen him. I don't hear him. Oh, he's not in yet. It looks like. It's yeah, let me let me ping him one second. Okay. He's online, so I hope he sees it. If you cannot join, it's not a problem. I can talk through the slides myself. Maybe um, before he joins, um, the format for today. So. How much time do we have roughly? So what is usually, how does this work, this meeting? Yeah, we have uh, pretty much the whole time because this is the only item on the agenda. Uh, we might yeah. actually um, talk about the tag, run, the tag run time sandbox reviews at the end, but that, that's just like a couple of minutes, so. Okay. Sounds good. All right, let me start sharing slides so we can start this off. All right, you should see some KCP logo, I guess. Yep, yep. Okay, so um, yeah, the, the background of this presentation, so most of you will have seen that we started a, or created a sandbox issue in the CNCF sandbox project um, like in June, so some weeks ago. And um, yeah, there's some feedback below and most of you will have seen that and maybe even read through that. Um, anyway, we, we have prepared some slides where we summarize the main points and um, of course we have plenty of space uh, time-wise for further questions, any technical depth, so 
um, about uh, roadmap, about governance, uh, all those topics. But most of them, I think we will cover in the slides to start with. So maybe let me just um, I'll just start here. I hope this works. Hey, Stefan, I'm also now here. Sorry for being late. Oh, cool. Very good. All right, so KCP. Um, KCP started at a KubeCon where, where Clayton Coleman gave a talk about his idea to split a Kube API server into logical clusters. This was basically the, the um, start of the project and all the past since then. Um, some things like this logical cluster concept is still here. So it's on the first slide, but it will be uh, throughout um, the slides uh, further down. To understand what KCP is, and um, yeah, I think this slide is maybe the most important one to really understand what we are doing. Um, everybody knows Linux containers, and everybody knows how the Linux kernel transitioned from a basically a vehicle to run VMs and uh, yeah, hardware machines, of course, um, with multiple processes. Um, it transitioned to a world where we had well, where we introduced containers. And the container is basically also something, it's a process, everybody knows that. And a process is namespace in the kernel um, if it's if it's in a uh, container. So every process has its own user namespace, usually a pit namespace, network namespace, depending on how you set up the containerizer. Um, some of them exist, some don't. But basically, namespaces are the core um, functionality in the kernel to split apart to isolate processes. And we do something very similar in KCP. So the idea of Clayton was basically to do a similar thing like containers virtualization, but now for control planes. So um, yeah, I, um, isolation is certainly one aspect. And we can later on go into detail so if you have questions about that. Some kind of isol isolation, some kind, I say some kind because it's not isolation in the sense of VMs, like VMs or complete clusters, like multiple tube clusters, of course, is different um, to the container-like virtualization. But anyway, there is some kind of isolation which is um, different to the process isolation or the namespace isolation in Cube. Um, there's a big aspect about optimization. So we want to optimize the use of, a, of an API server of something which was called a cluster in Kubernetes. We want to um, use isolation to split it into sections we call logical clusters. Each of them is more or less like a cluster and creating those logical clusters is much, much more efficient. So we're talking about uh, one to two dimension, uh, magnitudes, not dimensions. So two, two magnitudes, roughly a factor of 100. Um, if you think about K3S or something similar um, to run the K3S cluster, it's one gigabyte of memory, roughly. So we are talking about uh, a logical cluster is uh, a hundredth of that. So maybe five megabytes, 10 megabytes in this dimension. Um, Everybody who has followed Linux containers in the last, I don't know, 15 years or so. I mean, they, they did something technical. We have Docker nowadays, but they did even something for the ecosystem. They created space in the ecosystem and the, develop, um, the development ecosystem to innovate. So basically the idea is um, VMs get smaller. We talk about containers. And when you talk about those containers, the yellow boxes here on the slide, there is space between containers which you can use to innovate, to create new things. Um, and from, from containers, you know, um, I mean, there, there are container images, there are registries. The whole Kubernetes movement um, is enabled by containers. You can move containers around. And similar things you can imagine in the control plane. So if you have smaller control planes, and many, many of them, and they are logical, logically not um, bound to a Cube API server and not bound to one etcd. The logical construct you can even imagine to move them around, and you can imagine to to um, connect them again in certain ways. So we will talk about API exports and API bindings in a minute. So there's a mechanism in KCP which takes those small clusters but creates relations which are not possible um, in Kubernetes clusters nowadays. So optimize, isolate, innovate, very similar to these containers. That's a 30,000 uh, feet view. Of course, if we, if we dive down, um, KCP is generic. So 
what KCP is doing, it takes basically Cube API server, but it removes everything which is um, container related. So there are no pods, there are no, no deployments. All those things are gone. Um, everything which is left are the generic APIs. So they are CRDs, they are config maps, secrets, namespaces, airbag objects, and uh, some others. So that's the first part, generic APIs. So you can use that in a context which is not container related. That's the idea. Logical clusters, we talked about that already, and I have some slides um, after that, which shows the different ways to use logical clusters, but basically virtualization of a control plane. The third one is um, this innovation piece, cross logical cluster mechanisms, exporting and binding of APIs is one of those examples. You can imagine also um, authorization mechanisms. So um, if you have logical clusters, you can inherit some airbag objects, for example, airbag rules, holes, and those things. So cross logical cluster mechanisms of some kind. And the last one is when you have um, so small um, logical clusters, which are con like containers in, in this uh, other example in the analogy, you can think about horizontal scaling. If those objects are small, you can think about having multiple shards of KCP, so multiple like 10, 100, 1,000 KCPs next to each other, each of them has its own database, so its own data, uh, etcd, for example, and you have many, many, many um, logical clusters uh, on this platform. So that's the first part, also in scalability. And um, I put here on the on the right side in the corner. Um, so we promised to talk about a different scope of KCP as a project. Basically, we have removed everything from the core KCP, which was around compute. So in the old um, project, like um, a year ago, compute was always there. Like you could um, create deployments and deploy them to multiple clusters. You could connect clusters to KCP. All this part is not in core KCP anymore. It can be built on top, but it's clearly on top. It's not part of KCP itself. All right, so logical clusters, this is basically yeah, the most simple picture. You run a KCP, you, you check what KCP from GitHub, you say KCP start, and you get that. So um, you can create logical clusters inside of this instance. They share one etcd, and in front there's a small proxy. It's embedded in the process. And you can talk to all of them via normal um, cube-like APIs. So you can use kubectl, you can use GitOps tools, UIs, uh, controllers, whatever you like. Everything is conformant um, as long as you use the, the APIs which are available. Of course, you cannot see pods because there are no pods, right? But if you use CRDs and config maps and everything else which is, which is available, it's just cube. And um, if you succeed with the project, um, you will not notice. Of course, you can check kubectl version and you see it's a KCP server. But next to that, it's just a cube API server, stripped down to generic APIs. So this is um, the most, uh, most simple example, one single instance. Um, if you look inside every logical cluster, as we um, described already, is basically cube. That's why there is a small Kubernetes icon. It's, uh, it's a cube API server. It looks like one independent API server. In every of social clusters, you can have CIDs, for example. They're completely independent. You can have airbag in every uh, of those independently, um, secrets, config maps. Um, if you are logged in, logged in to use a cube cuttle against one of those logical clusters, um, you will not see objects of another logical cluster. Similar to containers, if you are in a container and you say, uh, say LS in the bash, you will not see anything else. You will not even see processes. Same thing here, it's completely independent. And um, yeah, there are some more resources. So workspaces are the way to define logical clusters. Um, Think of them, it's like a file system or file directory in, entry in Linux. So uh, if you create a directory, there's a pointer to another file or another directory. And that's the same thing here. Workspace is the object you use to create logical clusters in this KCP chart. And um, as mentioned before, we can get APIs into that logical cluster via CIDs because CIDs are just available, normal CIDs. But you can also use something called API bindings. So one logical cluster, like the one at the bottom here, can export APIs and a binding connects another cluster to that export. When you bind, you get basically as a CID into your logical cluster. Um, this offers, or this allows um, to build things like um, yeah, a provider-consumer relationship. 
And of course, this can be one to end. There can be one export, and there can be hundreds of binding workspaces if you want. And um, I use workspaces and logic cluster pretty much um, the same way. Like a workspace defines a logic cluster. So you can say you work in a workspace or you can work in a logic cluster. It's basically the same thing. Logic cluster is the low level construct, workspace is a user facing construct. Um, sharding no allows. Uh, in the previous uh, slide. Uh, yes, go ahead. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is good. Thanks for the presentation. Uh, so for the API bindings is just a simple question. So, so does that mean like you you can have multiple logical clusters and basically uh, you can see the resources uh, across yeah. all the logical clusters? Is that yeah. kind of like the main purpose of that? Maybe maybe let me switch to the next picture because it's it's makes more sense if you have uh, many shards. So imagine, um, so you're a provider of an API. So imagine you run Cert Manager as a service. Um, you would run your Cert Manager in one of the logical clusters here. So maybe on the left chart, some of those clusters is your Cert Manager uh, running on. You export the APIs you want to export, and then you have hundreds of clusters, logical clusters, which bind to that API of that Cert Manager. And we have ways to, um, to see all objects anywhere in a logical cluster throughout KCP. So you can run controllers very efficiently um, against every shard basically and see just the object you exported. Security is of course a topic there. So you don't see anything else than just your objects. But uh, for example, certificate request, if this is an object for a cert manager or a service, you could see all certificate requests throughout all the shards of KCP. So you can become a um, cert manager as a service provider in this context. Does this make sense? Yep, got it, thanks. Okay, so horizontal scaling um, is one idea. And um, again, the KCP proxy is here again, and the KCP proxy is in front. So we also call it a front proxy for KCP. So the proxy knows where to route traffic. Like when you use kubectl and you want to access um, logical cluster ABC, the, uh, the KCP proxy will know where to, to route the traffic, for example, to the left chart. And um, yeah, then it's just cube um, API traffic, which is uh, going through the channel there. So you can use, even in the setup, you can use a normal cube cuttle or cube um, tools you are used to. Very important, every of those Kubernetes tools uses or talks to one logical cluster at a time. So of course, there is more than just logical clusters, but um, uh, one of those tools using the API sees one logical cluster at a time. If you want to, to switch to another one, you basically change the base URL and you access another logical cluster. Okay, horizontal scaling. Um, we can do the opposite. We can embed KCP into applications. So you see already the theme. KCP is about form factors for control planes. So, um, Totally in scope for KCP is also to embed this um, mechanism of KCP, this component, into your own application and um, have maybe a public API of your application and have some other logical clusters which are not exposed, but because they just store internal state. You can build something like that. You can even build a multi tenant system with that, where you have multiple public APIs for every tenant its own. So you're pretty free to use logical clusters to structure um, yeah, the, the work, the control planes. Embedded, and maybe the last example, um, think about multi-region deployments. So horizontal sharding is nice if it's a one region, then it's, um, yeah, it's getting more interesting when it's getting multi-region. And um, I showed you in the beginning um, API bindings and exports. In such a setup, you can imagine US East one goes down and um, US, S, uh, US West one and EU West one, they should keep working. So. Um, there are a lot of thoughts in the system to make that possible. So basically everything which is um, not in a logical cluster, but around those, so somewhere in this gray area of a shard, this is basically eventually consistent or replicated in an eventually consistent way to all the other shards. Instead of logical cluster, it's just etcd um, semantics as you know it from Kubernetes, but outside it's a little different. So multi-region is also a thing which is possible with KCP. All right, so if you have many um, logical clusters, um, yeah, how, to, how can you use them? Every logical cluster has a name. So um, 
This can be any string, basically, like a name in Kubernetes of objects. Here you have logic cluster names. And we have a colon inside for a separator. So if you want to um, implement an, a hierarchy of some sort, colon is the one, the character we use for that. But basically, um, every logical cluster is just um, named by a string. It can be uh, some ID, some U UID, um, doesn't matter much. Um, the higher level um, concept is a workspace. So I said in the beginning, a workspace defines logical clusters. And a workspace is just a kind in KCP. So you can say create workspace, and then you get a logical cluster, which is logically nested in the previous one. But it is its own. Um, yeah, cluster basically. So it's it's not inheriting anything by default. One can think about inheritance, but by default, KCP doesn't do that. It's basically like a directory in a file system. Um, a directory in a file system, if you create another one, you will not inherit files, right? Your directory is empty from the beginning. And the same thing here. If you create a workspace, um, it's empty, and you can use higher level mechanisms to syn synchronize objects, to inherit whatever you can come up with. KCP is agnostic about that. SAP just gives you logical clusters. And um, yeah, to make it somehow usable, we created a two pedal plugin. So it's called Workspaces or WS for short. And basically it's like CD in a, in a shell. So to change the directory, um, here we have a, a tool to change workspaces. So you can walk around. So dot means where am I at the moment? You can um, have an absolute past like this root tenant engineering. You can say get workspaces, you get basically like a directory um, listing. You can um, change relatively, so you can say uh, front end, and then you are in the root tenant engineering front end workspace. And you can see more of them. Um, and um, yeah, this, this um, little Kubernetes logo here is just an idea what one could build. In KCP, there is a concept of um, workspace types. So you can imagine cross plane. Um, Anything, I mean, there are many tools nowadays which are not about containers anymore, right? Crossplane is not about containers. Crossplane is about cloud objects. So imagine you have a type. If you use that, you have crossplane and you can install AWS um, uh, providers and get the types for AWS, for example. Tecton is another example. And you could also have links. So in the file system, you have sim links. So imagine you could just uh, have a sim link, which is a workspace because it defines. Um, how to go to another cluster. But um, in this case, you would go to another Kubernetes cluster instead of logical cluster. And you can walk around, as I said, and um, there's also the last command here. It's dot, dot, if you want to go back um, into the previous one, that's the way to do it. So this is a UI, the so minimal UI to use workspaces. Technically, um, the hierarchy is optional. So um, we have started work to make it optional so you don't have to use it. But if it fits your use case, there's a hierarchy mechanism to, um, yeah, to just use. All right, so why is this interesting? Um, one big section in the, in the issue for the sandbox submission um, has this content basically. So KCP extends Kubernetes use cases. So this multi-region idea um, and use cases which are not about containers in general. We reuse Kubernetes everywhere. So everything here is built on Kubernetes. Um, API server, of course, is the main component, but controllers as well, uh, we reuse all of that. We try to contribute back everything which makes sense. So um, yeah, we come to uh, one big part in a second. And maybe the most important rule is we try to be 100% compatible or conformant with a logical cluster. So in a logical cluster, it's cube. Of course, no pods, no compute, but the types, the CIDs, it's 100% conformant. So you can just use a tool like, um, yeah, IOCD, Flux, whatever, and just use it against logical cluster. And um, yeah, why is this important for the landscape? Um, so of course, it, it opens up new use cases, so it increases weight um, of Kubernetes, of the API machinery of Kubernetes as a de facto standard in the ecosystem. And um, we, we, we are conformant, so you can just reuse the tools which exist. Kubectl just works, Flux just works. Um, with that, of course, the hope is that um, with more use cases and more contributors, that's good, of course. And maybe one more important piece here, um, we think there is something missing in the CNCF landscape, which KCP can fill. And there are movements or there are attempts in the ecosystem where people build something like an API server Kubectl more or less works, 
but it's not really cute. So what we have in mind here, we want this to be the basis for generic API servers of uh, different form factors, whatever your form factor uh, is, um, KCP should help you to build your product. And with that, to keep the, the ecosystem around generic control plans based on Cube United, very important. All right, manifesto basically just um, repeats uh, what I just said. Um, summary is be a good citizen in the Kubernetes and the CNCF landscape. Don't divert, um, try to integrate, try to reuse and um, contribute back. All right, Sebastian, do you want to take over? Oh, yes, I can take over. Um, yeah, so there are already uh, some adapters uh, who are using uh, KCP. Um, Cube Stellar, uh, which is an IBM development project. Uh, uh, I think we need to update the GitHub uh, uh, URL. Uh, it has now its own organization, was born inside of the KCP repository. But if you go to Cube Stellar, um, uh, they independently continuing it. Um, yeah, we from Kubernetes uh, are starting leveraging KCP uh, to manage, um, yeah, non uh, Kubernetes workload uh, with a Kubernetes based API. Um, as Stefan already mentioned, uh, cross plane um, is an interesting workload for KCP and upbound. Uh, with Crossplane is a natural consumer for generic control planes. Um, and also SAP is prototyping a uh, successor of their uh, nodeless or workerless clusters in uh, Gardena. Um, contributing uh, to um, the CNCF is the contribution of this Red Hat. Uh, sponsoring are uh, yeah, mostly the four ones above, IBM, Kubernetes, Upbound, and uh, VMware. Uh, we also have some project champions, uh, Maximilian Braun from SAP uh, and uh, Vasu uh, from um, SAP and also um, Nikita uh, from VMware, uh, she's in the call, um, um, are the champions for this project. Yeah, we, we promised to talk about roadmap. Um... It's kind of boring because um, they already checked all of them here. So um, one goal was to to um, scope down, like to remove the compute part. This is done. Um, there are people working on the compute part independently, but it's not in core KCP. So that's done. Um, we have a cap. I, I talk about that in a second in upstream Kubernetes 4080. Kubestella, that's what Sebastian just said. Um, it's separate now with its own governance um, as of June. So, and the last thing, um, yeah, we have cleaned up the, the repository or the, the, the um, organization in GitHub to, to remove old unmaintained parts. So um, it should be pretty clean now. KCP dev slash KCP is the main repository, but there are some more helper libraries um, there are some explanations in the in the sandbox if you want if you want to know details, and um, medium long term um, this uh, cap is pretty much in the center, so we want to contribute back. That's a, it's one big goal of the project, and um, there's one one yeah one task which API machinery um, wanted to do for years basically. So the idea to have a generic control plane. Um, is in scope for SIG API machinery. And uh, we wrote this cap for 80, which is about that, to um, enable the cube libraries. So the staging libraries, as you know them, um, KDS, uh, API machinery, API server, and so on, to build generic control planes, to build something which works like a Kubernetes control plane without the um, con container specific um, APIs but still have things like garbage collection and uh, namespaces and airbag and all those things, you know, from Cube. 480 is about building the foundation for that. And we are working on that. And it's, I think it's, yeah, it's the next one here. It's a slide. Um, it's roughly 
half done. Um, so in 128, we have done a lot of work already and we continue uh, with that. So the generic um, control planes, which come out of 480 here, will be one of the, uh, maybe half of the basis of KCP. So um, lots of the changes we do today in KCP against Cube will just go away and will just be upstream. Um, KCP will basically be what we describe here in this cap plus logical clusters. Then you have KCP plus workspaces with higher level stuff, but basically it's 480 plus logical clusters. All right, I think we are nearly at the end already. So um, the links, um, that's the main repository. Sandbox issue is linked there. KCPIO is a website. Um, there's also documentation if you want to read um, link to the um, to the cap I just showed, and um, a link to the KubeCon talk I had in uh, in uh, November uh, last year at KubeCon. So if you want to watch that, this also gives uh, gives a good overview of what this is heading to. All right, I think we are through. So we're open for any kind of questions. Some question about the upstreaming to uh, Kubernetes that that component is basically what's a logical cluster or that or what is this a like what represents a logical cluster and within KCP now and then that's going to be uh, yeah or, or something else. Either we ups, upstream that piece. Um... Is is unsure. Let's let's say um, so. Logic cluster technically, um, it's a subtree in the SAG key space. So basically, what we have to do when you access a certain logic cluster, we inject a different prefix for everything you you do against SAG. That's that's a trick. So it's a strategic change in the storage layer of of, of Kubernetes. Um, most things above are basically unchanged. Whether we get something into upstream, um, what we would like to do to get something into upstream, which enables that change in an elegant way. That's the goal, I think. I don't think Cube itself will have logical clusters, but it should have the ability to plug something in, which gives you logical clusters. Got it, got it. So it's it's yet to be determined. It's not, not quite, uh, so you haven't decided yet, it sounds like. Yeah. All right, thanks. And uh, another question, more out of curiosity, that do you have uh, any use cases for, um, I mean, you have that slide about multi-region, uh, you have the use cases about um, disaster recovery or, um, or maybe having stateful sets in different regions and have a, have a um, backup uh, stateful set for, let's say, a database or something in a different region and automate the the process of recovering from a disaster or multi-region. Um, yeah, yeah to, in, to, to, in addition, to understand. In addition, sorry, go ahead. Just to clarify this question, um, are you talking about the stateful set which runs etcd and the KCP components or do you talk no. about a workload on KCP? No, a workload. I'm talking about a workload. Yeah. Like so, a, like a um, folder or yeah. something like that. KCP is not about compute. So there are no stateful sets. It's generic, right? What you can do, you could build APIs, maybe called stateful sets, and um, basically replicating what Kubernetes is doing for a stateful set. You could do that on top of KCP. So you could offer an API as a service, state for sets as a service, which then run, um, yeah, state for sets, databases, pods, whatever. This is, uh, um, th that's what the TMC, the Transparent Multi-Cluster Project did, which was part of KCP, which we moved out, okay? Um, when we talk about multi-region here, it's really about having logical clusters in different regions and the 
cross-logic cluster mechanisms like this API binding, API export. And maybe the, um, the last thing here, um, the hierarchy, that those things keep working in multi-region um, environments, even if a region goes down, for example. Okay, so it's really about um, getting those concepts um, yeah, available, partition tolerant, probably. So um, those are different topics. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Got it. So I mean, it sounds like um, the user would have to create some sort of automation if they wanted to do some sort of disaster recovery or or yeah. a test disaster test disaster recovery or or um you know see what happens with that whatever scenario they have so just just one um yeah so, some some idea um there has been work about uh different storage engines like to use uh, cockroach db instead of ncd so basically imagine those boxes here which uh, are etcd in this picture um, you would have not three etcds but you would have a cockroach db or a spanner or whatever some, some kind of um, global database, um, which has properties around multi-region as well. So there were ideas, uh, yeah, some of them we explored. So you could imagine to have a logic cluster which spans regions, if the database supports it, um, at least in a, in a read-only way, for example. You could, uh, you could keep writing in one part of the, of the world when one region goes down, but you can read everywhere or something like that. So there are ideas to, to extend that, but this is really, yeah, it's, it's not implemented, it's just ideas. And it's, again, it's not about compute, it's really about um, writing, or well, it's about control planes in the sense that you write controllers against them so that controllers can can work in a multi-region fashion. So you have to run right. the controllers, for example, in every region for your tenants. Got it, got it. Yeah, so this will be more for uh, for the project itself, right, to, to have the redundancy. But the, um, I was just curious about the the users if they had some sort of database, but I mean, obviously, the users can actually pay for some something like Cockroach TV if they want to, right? So, but if they wanted to have some some sort of like multi-region architecture, and it may not necessarily be database; it could also be like um, like a stateless type of workload that it, that um, listens on multiple regions. Uh, depending on the location of the user, right? Considering like web services, right? So you have users in Europe, then they want to get to a, a service that, or, you know, cluster that is located closer to Europe. And then maybe users in North America, they want to get to a cluster and closer to the, to North America. But yeah, so, I mean, it sounds like an interesting, interesting uh, project and, and I think uh, users would would actually explore some of those uh, challenges. Right. Any other questions? It's a quiet crowd. Uh, the more questions, the better. Uh, there's no dumb question. So another question is, where will you actually um, run KCP uh, yeah, itself? Is it run on a VM or run in Kubernetes or, or does it run in containers? Yeah, it, it depends a bit, of course, when you have a single instance uh, setup um, or even the embedded setup, um, then it's different than when you run something like that, right? But it's natural to to run that one Kubernetes. I mean, if you have more of those one, I mean, not only one shard, but n shards, and you want something like Kubernetes. 
And of course, if you go multi-region, you would have multiple clusters below, like one in each region for multiple and transit shards there. Actually, I do have a question here regarding the KCP proxies, if you would, uh, if you don't mind. Um, so with regard to, so you say it's all the API machinery. So things such as the API server, the controller manager, and I guess schedulers and kind of, well, yeah, I guess the schedulers are in there, but are those running all within the same process uh, essentially, or would they still be split up into their own essentially executables? So in the moment you run KCP from the GitHub repository, you get one process which has everything. So there are controllers, there's a proxy embedded, everything one, okay. one command. Even even etcd by default is embedded. Gotcha. Um, but gotcha. you can split it up if you want. Gotcha. Yeah, the etcd part. That's what I was curious about. Where are they all running? Okay, perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, almost like the K uh, the K three S approach. As I think you mentioned it's, that earlier. It's Somewhat. exactly. It's the same same idea to make it simple to run it. But of course, for production deployments, maybe you don't want to embed it, so you can use. Uh, so now, I mean, it's, it's Cube API server, basically, so most parameters you know from Cube API server, you can just point to an etcd cluster, and then it's used. Great, thank you. I'm looking through the docs now. It looks really interesting. Yeah. All right. Looks like um, there may be people curious, but not so many questions. <laughs> okay, so well, thank you for the presentation. Uh, I think uh, if anybody else has any other questions, they can follow up on Slack. Do you, do you also have a Slack channel on this in the CNCF or is yeah, that we are, some... we are in the Kubernetes Slack, so there's a KCP Dev channel. KCP as well. Kubernetes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. and there's of course a, there's a two weekly meeting. Um, yeah, everything you will find on the website, or you go to the lecture and ask via there. So, awesome, awesome. Yeah, so thank you for the presentation. Yeah, if, if anybody has any other questions, they can follow up on Kubernetes Slack. Um, yeah, you can ping Stefan, or you can ping Sebastian, or um, any other maintainers from the project. Uh, and looking forward to seeing the the project in sandbox. I see your application is is already in progress. So um, looking forward to that uh, being being in the CNCF. All right. One, one last. Time. Go, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. No, go ahead. Okay. So one last um, item that I we have in the meeting is the. Sandbox uh, application, oh, sorry, not the Sandbox, but the annual reviews for the Sandbox uh, project. So there's a couple of projects that, that um, sorry, I'm gonna kick you out for a second here. Yeah, okay. There's a couple of projects that we're looking for uh, some volunteers to um, to review, right? So if you interested, we love to have you you know, review some of these. Hopefully, you don't have a conflict of interest. Um, so typically, it's a you don't um, you're not maintaining the project, or you don't have like a direct relationship with the project. Uh, so, and then we do have a process that it uh, that we created is posted on the Tag Runtime uh, Slack channel. Uh, and if you have any questions, you can ask me, or ask uh, Nikita, or ask um, Heba. And yeah, and then so. So just a couple of projects here, Super Edge, I think, and uh, Acre is another one that we're looking for. Sandbox uh, annual reviews. And that's it. Anybody has any other questions? Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you all for joining today. And thank you to the KCP team. And yeah, so we'll give you back another 15 minutes. Enjoy your day. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. Thank you. Bye-bye.